Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings with me, the tea drinking author who's just for a change drinking a cup of coffee. I like to ring the changes. I've got two little boxes that arrived recently. Thank you very much to Alistair and the people at Conway Stewart. One is no surprise, but it's a delight to have back. And one is really quite a surprise. So let's have a look at them. So what have we got here? Two little boxes of beautifulness. That's what we've got. First of all, let me just show what's in this box. Because last year I managed to do that ridiculous thing and went Morris dancing with one of my best pens in my pocket. And because I didn't do the sensible thing and have it clipped to my shirt, I had it in a little pen sleeve. The pen sleeve and pen hopped out of my pocket, crashed onto the floor and cracked the whole of the cap. Which was devastating, actually. So I sent it back to Conway Stewart. And now... I have a fully functioning pen once more with, even better, my favourite nib from Conway Stewart on it, which is a medium stub nib that was reground for me. And this is the nib I've been using in my Drake for the last few months, and it's just wonderful. But it's so nice to have my pen back. And I have to admit, Conway Stewart have done an absolutely fabulous job all of this had to be completely redone, but while retaining the cap, because the cap has DC for detection collection on the top there. You can probably just about see there. And it's a Winston pen, and it's absolutely wonderful. It's one of my favourite writers of any manufacturer. I just adore it. So, that was the first thing that came through. What was the second thing? Well, looky here, folks. First things first, this is the assorted paperwork you get with the Conway Stewart, so a thank you for buying with links through to signing up for the newsletter, read the latest blogs, follow us on Instagram, all that sort of stuff. It is a vintage black. It's a limited edition, number 29. Nice to know. And then because it's a Conway Stewart, now they give you a list of what the hallmarks all mean on your pen, which is rather nice. So what are the hallmarks? The traditional symbols here. It shows magnified what the symbols are on the pen. You've got the maker's mark, CS, assay mark, date letter, the fineness mark, and then a little bit of history as well. All rather good fun. You also, in the box, always get one of these. So you've got some spare inks, you've got a pen polishing cloth, and you have an instruction manual on how to actually use your pen, which is mostly how do you fill it with ink. And you get this little display box, which I, I've always liked these little boxes. They're rather neat. Pull up the lid, and inside you have a fountain pen. Now, what is this? This is a Marlborough. But the thing I love about it is, it's an ebonite Marlborough, so it's just that little bit different. It's got a nice warmth to it. And then all this lovely gold trim. It actually looks as though there's a lot of gold on it. And then you look at it again and you see, actually, there isn't that much. You've got the clip, you've got one band here and a second band here. On the second band, I'll hold it up here. You should just be able to see the symbols which confirm that it's gold, what the purity is, etc. So... All the stuff that you want to check up from that book 
is there. So externally, let's have a look at this pen. Let's move that out of the way before I knock everything flying. And these as well. Right, so what can I say about this pen? First is, as you'd expect with the Conway Stewart, it's gleaming and shiny. I've managed to get dust on it already, but that's my fault, not Conway Stewart's. The clip is that nice, solid, robust Conway Stewart type. You could put this into your shirt and be absolutely confident it's not going to fall out. Two nice, fat gold bands which look rather stunning. You've got the top of the cap has a very slight dome to it, whereas the bottom of the pen is flat across, which I, is different. It's actually quite sharp and I rather like that. It's a nice little detail. The actual side of the cap and the side of the pen are completely parallel sided, so there's no um, slight um, flaring, there's no cigar shape or anything, it is just a simple parallel sided cylinder in effect. When you get to the section there's a delightful dip and then flare. It fits my hand absolutely superbly I must admit. I really like the feel of this. The nib is on this one, I think a bold Conway Stewart nib, and it feels just divine to write with. Really glorious. Can it be posted? Well, yes it can. I wouldn't say it's the happiest posting. It doesn't post very far, as you can see, but it does post. When you close it, it's not a significant amount of thread to be able to lock the cap. In fact, I'd say that's probably about three quarters of a turn or less. Between half and three quarters of a turn, which is nice. It's quite quick to open it and get it out to use it. Overall impression, it's not a heavy pen, but it is glorious looking. A few dimensions. In terms of length, in terms of length, I would say that's 13 and a half centimetres, which in English makes about five and a quarter inches. The cap itself is two and a half inches, which is, looking at it the other way, about 6.4 centimetres. The pen itself in total, let's just get that there, is about 12.6 centimetres <sighs> and going the other way that makes it five inches. If it's capped, or sorry, if it's posted, then it's up to seven and one eighth inches, which is also almost exactly 18 centimetres. In terms of weight, because I have just measured it, the cap itself is 12 grams, the pen is 13, so it's a total of 25 grams. That's with ink inside it, I should say. Just going to check exactly what the diameter is. There we go. Zero that. The cap. I'm afraid I've only got this is this in millimeters. So that's about 15 millimeters basically. And then the barrel 
is 13.2 millimeters. So you've got a very pleasant light pen. It certainly isn't a heavy one. With a delightful size to it, not too much weight, but a very appealing look. So let's see what it writes like, shall we? That seemed to make sense. And I've forgotten the name of the stuff it's made of. Ebonite. Ebonite has the one. Now let's be realistic. This is a Conway Stewart. It's a fabulous pen. Really well designed. It has a lovely feel to it. Now when I started looking at this, those very nice people at Conway Stewart gave me a little bit of a write-up. So here it is, a pen to review. It's the Conway Stewart Marlborough Vintage Black Ebonite Gold with a, with a Conway Stewart 18 karat gold broad nib. Now he says this is made from ebonite. Sorry, there's a hair on there. Ebonite is vulcanizing natural rubber to make it a hard product. He says it has a distinctive smell. I have no sense of smell. Hey ho. He says that most pens from 1905 to 1920 were made in hard rubber and most of them were black. Yes. These gold rings are both nine carat gold with hallmarks on the bottom ring, he says. Uh, the clip is gold plated with 23 karat gold and the nib is an 18 karat gold Conway Stewart broad nib on this pen. You can specify what sort of nib you want, obviously. He says, interestingly, silver and gold overlay pens were developed from 1905 to 1920. That was because all pens were like this. They were all black ebonite. And so people with a bit of money would take their pen to their favourite jeweller and the jeweller would overlay it with silver or gold that was carved and pierced to make specific patterns just to suit that buyer. Usually it was done by overlaying a sheet of silver or gold with a pattern that's pierced into the sheet. And then Alistair, the managing director, says, I often compare this to the wealthy gentry buying a car in those times from Rolls-Royce and taking it to their favourite coach builder like Thrupp and Maberly or Park Ward or J. Gurney Nutting & Co. But he also says, interestingly, this is the pen that was used to kill Michael Caine's character in the first of the Kingsman films, The Secret Service. That was a Marlborough vintage black ebonite gold lever fill pen and Conway Stewart will make them in exactly that format if you so wish. So if you want to have a lever fill pen instead of this, which is, I should have said, a standard cartridge converter, so you can either use universal ink cartridges or, as I did, just fill the cartridge converter with ink. As I said, this is Dominant Industry Stroke Cult Pens Limited Edition Dusk Ink, which I find absolutely glorious. It's rather like Earl Grey from Diamine, but with little sparkles in it. It's glorious. One last thing I should say is if you don't really like the gold, you can have the same pen but with silver. And I must admit, I think gold is a little bit overrated in pens. Personally, I would probably go for silver. Black and silver, I think, just goes so well on a pen like this. That's my opinion. What's yours? Well, I hope that was interesting. I feel rather fortunate to have been 
given a chance of testing this Marlborough for the last few weeks and it is gorgeous. I wasn't able to get to it too quickly because of this operation but as you can see hands are improving. That finger still won't come in but I can type, I can lift things, I'm starting to get all the feeling back in this hand apart from the little finger. So with luck the operation went very well and thanks to all those who sent best wishes and so on. Um, and apart from that, don't forget, if you enjoyed this, do please hit the like and hit the subscribe and hit the bell and then tell your friends about it and all those things because it just helps. And apart from all of that, more details about Conway Stewart. If you're interested in Conway Stewart pens, don't forget I've got a link at the bottom and you can get a discount off them. I get a little bit of a kickback too, which is nice, but um, don't let that influence you. Hope that was interesting. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back in a week's time. Take care.